so let's get started with the mage tutorial. Before I begin, just want to say that the warrior we went from bottom up, and this one we're gonna go backwards. So I built the blueprint already, and I'm gonna cover the uh, the spells and the attacks and the summon basically. And I won't be going through, for example, launch character or camera shakes or zoom in because we already covered that sort of stuff with the warrior. So for the mage to get started, which you saw in the demo, I'm gonna explain these quick attacks. And the way they work is if you hold down a left mouse button, you enter a mode in which you can loop the animation and fire your projectiles. And when you release, well, you exit that mode. But there are other conditions. For example, if uh, you're out of mana, you automatically exit that mode. Or if you're dodging, you're, you're going to exit that mode. So you can dodge while attacking. So to enter your attack mode, you need to have all these conditions met. They all need to be true. So if the character's alive, if he's not dodging, if he has enough resources, if he's not charging or casting. These two we'll cover in later videos along with dodge. But charging is basically when you hold down right click, uh, your character starts to build up charges, and casting is when the animation is playing. We're gonna cover it later. Now the second condition, I'm just gonna copy paste this and connect it to the second one. I'll also remove a pin because in order to enter, the mode you need to have enough resource but in order to exit it doesn't matter how much resource you have you just need to basically meet these conditions so you're not casting you're not charging oh, don't need that one you're not dodging and you're alive so once these have been met you can exit the mode or you could exit anyway but I'll show you why it probably wouldn't be a good idea to leave this branch out so that's if you just click once and you're charging, let's say you're holding down left uh, you're holding down right mouse button and you click left really quickly, this will fire anyway. But if you are in charging mode it wouldn't fire. So that's it's kinda like a fail safe switch here. So let's go further down into uh, what happens when you're pressing the left mouse button. You set an, a variable, a boolean to true, and here I made categories. If you want to make categories, you click on the variable and type something in here and it's going to pop up. So attacking is editable and it's set to true. It stops the player movement and I'll explain why we need this, it's pretty important. And you can rotate and stop mana regen. These two functions we're going to explore and set your camera shake. Now when you release the left mouse button to exit the mode, if your conditions are true, you remove attacking, you set it to false, and you perform these two custom events that act as a master reset. I, I sped them up and I'm going to explain when, why when we get to dodging. So let's have a look at uh, cam rotate. So cam rotate and cam rotate off, they are pretty much the same thing as the warrior's shield mode, where you control the character with the mouse rotation. Next one is stop mana regen, it's exactly the same thing as the warrior's energy where you make a function that stops the uh, thing from regenerating and in fact here I didn't need to put it I didn't need to put a regeneration mana because it's already in these two so let's just go have a look at stop mana regen so if I just disconnect these wires now this is what the functions look like the reason why there's a do once, this is to regenerate, and this is to stop regeneration. So the reason why there's a do once is in case this event gets fired two times by whatever actions, they may have a reset. Or let's say if you uh, left click quickly or something like that, and your conditions have to be met well. If this is fired twice, it doesn't change anything because it can only do it once. And in, or in order to reset it, once you do its opposing action, this causes regeneration to reset. Because you either do this, or you do that. You don't do them both at the same time. So, at the end of this function, I can plug it into reset. So they're both kind of like A and B, and they toggle on and off. And they reset one another, so only one can be done at a time. Next, let's go look at the two cancels. 
Now here, I have cancel dodge and cancel attacks, and at the end you see there is regen mana. This is why we needed to do once, because this thing gets fired twice from our uh, left mouse button. Now here, dodging gets set to false, and uh, below it here, you have all your states. They all get set to false, <coughs> and your camera rotate gets set to off too. So this means the camera and the player rotation are uh, moving independently. So the player's rotation is no longer dependent on the camera's rotation. Let's have a look at the character's animation blueprint and see what happens. So here, at the beginning, it's the same thing as the warrior. I set the speed. I cast a character, then cast a mage blueprint. And then what I did is, I drag out a wire here, and I promote this to a variable. And in my sequence node, before I go show what 0 does, let's go see what 1 does. Here, it goes into a do once, and it sets that variable that I promoted. And I don't want it to be called every tick, so it's on a do once. The reason for that is so you don't have blue wires coming out. You can just drag that variable, you can get it, for example. And then you can drag out all the custom events you need, and all the uh, editable variables. So if I go to zero here, it's the same thing as the Unreal Engine punching animation montage tutorials. So here you get attack, and you set a variable called mana shoot, and you check in a branch if it's true, if this all this is set to true, well actually attacking. Then you do once, and you perform this custom event, which is going to play an animation montage. And if it's off, you reset it so you can do it again. Let's go have a look at this. Uh, the mana strike custom event, what it does, it plays a montage called strike 01. I'm going to show what this is. So this is strike 01, 02, 03. These are my basic strikes, and they're all set up the same way. <coughs> Now, if you want to know the animation, it's one hand magic attack 01. If you notice, in the animal attack, I have sections. I have the default and I have the end. The end basically means that when I'm done attacking, depending on which strike I'm on, if I stop attacking, you should continue playing from this section. <coughs> so, you see that I have an end montage section, which you right click new montage section, I have it at the end of each each of my strikes. Now going back to strike 01. Oh by the way the attacks for strike 02 and 03 are basically the same name with 02, 03. So if I go down here, if you if you can see this green line, it's over here where my mouse arrow is. So as long as I'm attacking <clears throat> it comes here and it hits this and I'm notified called chain and chain checks if I'm attacking and if I am it throws me into the next animation and the next animation is the same thing if I'm still attacking it comes to this animation notify and it sh throws me into the next now I made sure it's just a bit before that end marker it's just a tiny bit before it and this way in case I stop attacking and my animation is playing and I'm at this montage so here's my chain and then it checks am I still attacking? no? ok keep playing and it brings me back into idle so that's how the loop works every time you're attacking it's pretty much like the warrior you hit, you hit a chain combo and it sends you into the next animation you hit a chain combo and it sends you to the next and it loops that and if you stop depending on which strike Instead of looping you, it lets you play the rest of the animation to finish off your attack. Going back to the animation blueprint, that's what this montage is. So the custom event initiates the first strike, and then it sets combo, a variable that I made here, to 1. And you can ignore all the print strings in this blueprint. So once the combo has been set to 1, you're going to hit that anim notify called chain eventually. And it's going to check if mana shoot is on or off. That's what we set up here. If it's on, it continues down, and it goes and gets the combo. The combo default is 1, and the default is set over here. When you initiate the mana strike. <coughs> so you continue down, not into 0, but into 1. Because 0 
is the same animal attach as the initiate one. So you don't want to play the first strike two times. Instead you go on to the next one. And this one plays strike 02 and says the combo to 2. Because when you hit the notify again, you're going to meet the conditions if you're still attacking and combo is going to drive you down into pin number 2. And that's going to play your third strike and it sets combo to 0 to go back up here and play the first strike. It's, it just This is the loop. This whole section. Now let's say I stopped attacking. So I'm, this thing is set to false now. I re reach the chain. The chain checks. Okay, I'm in false. It comes and gets my combo and checks which combo I'm at. So depending on the number, it goes into a branch and sends me into the appropriate box. So I have a montage set next section. It takes my montage, it gets the default section, and it changes it to end. So I keep playing all the way to the idle animation. And it does that for all three of them, and you notice the last one is plugged into both true and false. That's because if you're not doing these two, there's no other one left but this one. So this is strike 3, 2, and 1. This is pretty much the loop. And I'm just going to jump back into the character's blueprint and show something else. I'm going to explain what that stop move uh, variable is for. There's a bunch of conditions that if any of these are, are true, then your character can't move. This way, when I'm holding down the mouse button, I'm not able to move. So, I have attacking, dodging, charging, uh, not alive, so the character's dead, uh, casting, and stop move. This is the crucial one. Now, if you remember, we set it up over here. So, it's ticked on to true. But the moment you release the left mouse button, in both of these cancel events, in both of these cancel events, it's not there. The reason why is because the moment you just left click once and let go, it doesn't allow you to move until the animation is done playing. And the way you dictate that is let's go into the strike animation. So here at the end I have a done attack this animation notify at the end of the animation go get the player it's a blueprint and it says stop move to false which means at the end you can be moving so if I do a quick demo I'm going to show you guys what happens first I'm just going to disconnect this so it's no longer taking it into consideration Now I'm just going to run around and left click and release it as quick as I can. You notice I'm sliding. That's because if my character gets reset and that stop move boolean is non-existent right now. So to prevent my character from sliding, I need, <coughs> I need a pin here. And I need to make sure that stop move controls the player's um, movements. So the moment it's on, I can't move. The moment it's off, I can move again. So now I did the same thing as the previous test, and my character can't move until that boolean is set to false. Now let's go have a look at the, what the mana balls do. So if you notice, my energy is going down, and when it's completely gone, my character is going to automatically exit the mode. After the last one, I was holding down, and it wouldn't do anything. So I'm going to explain how that works. Let's go to here, Mana Ball Projectile. So it's a custom event that if I go back to the Mage Blueprint, I have a Notify that calls this custom event. And I place this Notify three times. In fact, you can place it anywhere in any animation montage and it's going to call it. So you can actually make a pretty cool ultimate attack. Here's my Mana Shoot. I have one in each of these. So, mana shoot calls the custom event mana ball. And first thing it does is checks if I have enough resource. If I do, then it subtracts the resource. You can see from these, not the branch, but these three. Then it spawns the mana ball at the actor's location. And, well, at the actor's transformations. Next, if I didn't have enough and it was set to false, 
it would go down and it would turn off attacking so you automatically exit that attack mode and cancel dodge and cancel attack get triggered too and don't forget that stop move is going to get triggered by itself because of the animation when it's done playing so this pretty much covers up the mana ball projectile but I'm just going to show what's inside of it so now we're in the mana ball projectile and you can make your own but what I did is I took the boss's uh, that little blast he does, the yellow one, and I squished it and put a new material on it with a little ribbon trail particle so to get waves to spawn it's, it's just the, the fist effect that we use for the boss is fist sprites and there's a function that spawns one so the function spawns it at the location of the root and it does it at every point one second for two seconds and then it stops spawning them so after this, a tiny delay, and you set the collision sphere, you set the collision to enabled, and after 10 seconds you destroy it. Now there's something that the boss's projectile had that I noticed, was in order to hurt the player, it would cast to warrior blueprint. I realize you don't need that. So here, for example, I promoted actor to variable, this other actor, and this is the overlap event of the sphere. Then it checks if the other actor has a tag called boss. And our boss has that tag. And I'm just going to show it quickly. After, actually, I'll show it after. Um, so it goes through a branch, and if it's true, well, then it's going to apply damage to that other actor who has the tag called boss. It does whatever damage here you put. And it's player controller who's instigating it. Because if the damage that's coming in from the player is instigated by this controller, it won't affect the player. So you can't hurt yourself with your own spells. And then you spawn uh, a particle effects and you destroy the actor. So this is probably the best way to damage a boss because as long as they have this tag called boss, you can apply the damage. Now I'm just going to quickly show the, the boss where I put the tag because I don't remember if I put it in the videos or not. Yeah, it's been a long time. So here we got the boss. I'm going to type in tag and under actor I have the element tag called boss and that's pretty much it for how the mage works for projectiles or fast paced projectiles and I'm gonna have a look at uh, if there's anything else that needs to be said about this and I'll make another video but other than that that's pretty much it for the mage that's the fast attacks if you have any questions you can write in the in the comment section and I'll look into it and the next video we're going to cover is uh, dodging and probably discharge attack conditions this just means that you can enter charge mode but we're not going to cover the spells yet we're going to do dodge and charge attack so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video